What's, What's up, up guys? guys? Woohoo! Woo! We're back with another episode of we The are. We are. Let's go. Another day, another episode. Let's another go. day, another episode. Thursday, Yo. best day of the week, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, obviously. Sure. Day, obviously. Sure. Day, I love you know? Thursdays now. Bro. Oh, yes. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's <laughs> because go. you got the wreck on Thursdays. And if sure. you aren't watching it, please make sure you're watching it. Share this to all your friends, your family members. Keep them in tune. Because every Thursday, we got the wreck going on. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to miss it. Of course. He, <laughs> I know. Trust it. me. I've been watching it, bro. They're amazing. <laughs> well, actually, well, that segues way kind of into the beginning. Guys, we yes. are here with a very special guest. We got Kevin on Kevin, the podcast. Kevin, let's with go. Us. Hi, guys. So, can you have a say, man? Who are you? Introduce are you, yourself. I am Kevin DeSouza. Oh, Two boy. Kevins back to back. By that Kevin. is we true. Got Kevin. Was, I was going to say, my friends call me Kevin, but I was going to give it. I was going to let him have the <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Kevin. Shout out Kevin, bro. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Kevin DeSouza. Um, I've been friends with Nick for a while. We've been friends for a good, good amount of time. We got close like for the past three years. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm fake Brazilian, like you guys said in the past. <laughs> my parents, uh, they were born in Brazil and came to, they came to America like in their 30s. Mm -hmm. um, Same -same. Yeah, and then after that, uh, you know, I grew up here. Uh, now I go to Rutgers. I study finance at nice. Rutgers right now. Um, very involved in my church. Love church. Oh, I, that's great, I dude. can't wait to like tell a story oh. of, of, how, <laughs> of how it all started. But um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, man. That's him all wrapped up. Yeah, guys. So, you know, Rutgers, man. Rutgers, oh. college, definitely <laughs> it's a very rough very, atmosphere for I was a Christian. Say, it's so easy. Oh, it's no, the easiest thing, easy. yeah. yeah. Easiest it, thing for a Christian to be just walking around there. Oh, yeah, bro. There's Bibles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere you go. Bible, 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 Bible. But nah, man. Like, what would you say? Like, what's the atmosphere like over there? Oh, like, from, coming from a Christian's point of view. Yeah. So, I mean, at Rutgers, Newark, right? It's a very diverse. Oh, place. Jersey Squad. Jersey Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Rutgers. So, Rutgers, Newark specifically, because mm -hmm. there's New Brunswick too. Uh, Rutgers and Rutgers is a very diverse, like, college, right? There's mm -hmm. all types of people, all types of religions. Um, but, you know, for someone like us who's Christian and going to college, Rutgers and Rutgers is good because it's known as, like, a, a commuter college. You know, mm -hmm. there's not many people dorming there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, temptations when it comes to, like, partying isn't as bad as, like, somewhere like New Brunswick where there's yeah. more dorming, more parties. Like, the party life is more, like, It's more parent. active. It's very more active. active. I was going to say, it's very active in college. Everywhere you go, it's simply, oh, we got a party this, this week. Da, 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 da. Everywhere yeah. you yeah, go, yeah. that's... Exactly. So, what's good at Rutgers Newark, everyone is kind of just going there to get their schooling done. You know, go to class. You talk to your friends, like, in between classes, get lunch. Mm -hmm. and after you go home you know so there's not to if you you can get like dragged into like the parties and all that but it's really only if you let yourself you know it's only I mean? if you like really want yeah, boundaries you, for you yourself. have to you have to want to get dragged in but you know but also like when it comes to having friends in college like they could drag you in you just have to be careful with like how close you're getting to these people and how much you're letting them have influence over your life you know like i keep a balance with you know my college friends and my my church friends you know like That's my good. church friends are my people that are in my circle college friends obviously i love them mm -hmm. and i want the best for them and i try to help them every single day like from a christian point of view yeah. but you just can't let them suck you into that like that lifestyle gotcha, of yeah. partying because you know that's not that's not what we do so exactly. from that's kind of how my experience has been at Rutgers newark um but yeah so it's good that you have that already like that that boundary already set like no like i'm i'm here I'm here for school. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna get sucked into the whole party life. I'm not gonna be here to doing to drinking, to doing drugs, and and it's, and maybe it was even like a blessing that you were able to go to Rutgers Newark and not Rutgers New Brunswick Definitely. because maybe it would have been harder for you to deal with that atmosphere over there. Yeah, I think. yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. And also like I've had my experiences in high school with that. Mm -hmm. Kind of just going into college in general, I already knew I was gonna stay away from that party atmosphere. It's like it's a boundary you have to set for yourself before yeah. going into college. You know, because mm -hmm. if you do it accidentally, then you're not being intentional and you might get dragged into something so before you even go like set that boundary for yourself you know i'm just going to get get my degree you know like yeah i'm gonna have friends but uh, i'm gonna be careful with how much i feed into those relationships mm -hmm. and the most important thing for me is that um i show christ like through your lifestyle right mm -hmm. i think that's yeah. the most important thing you don't necessarily have to be like oh jesus is jesus is. just show them like 
the, like the love that you have for people that'll mm-hmm. show the love of God, you know, through, through your you. Through yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You know? Be that light. Be, be the light. Be you the know, salt you of be your... The, be the salt of the world. You gotta be yeah. that thing that shows them who Jesus is. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's, not, it's not shoving, oh, you need to be, you need to be Christian right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, through your lifestyle. I like how you said that too. Mm-hmm. Like wherever you go, you show Jesus through your personality, through who you are, through the way you act, the things you say. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Where you go. Mm-hmm. I love that so much. And I feel 100%. like it's a very good opportunity as well. You know, being in college, and you're very aware of the effects that college has. I guess oh, yeah. yeah, say, yeah. Or Temptations, the, everything, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very good to do that because you can already be like, no, I'm here for this reason. I'm here. I love the Lord. I'm going to continue serving the Lord. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's a very good mindset yeah. to have. Yeah, and it's awesome. Like, that's something that I learned in, like, the last years of high school and also in college. Like, the best way from my experience is to, like, to evangelize is not... You don't have to shove, like, Jesus down people's throats, exactly, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. the best way is really just to show how you're different. And, you know, like, how God has changed you, like, that's enough to already make people curious. Like, why oh, is yeah. he like that, you know? And then they exactly, want Exactly, yeah. Like, oh, that's you're like, different. Like, why? Exactly, right? Oh, yeah, like, let me tell you about this guy that I know. Let me yeah, tell you about bro. this guy. No, literally. Exactly. And, and I could testify to that because, you know, even in high school, you know, I, I remember, like, I used to walk around and, you know, I had that mindset already, like, established there you know like you know that i was different and like i said last episode people are kind of like afraid mm. to be different oh like, yeah in terms of a christian like being different but it's a good thing you know because god called us to be different regardless so we should rejoice in that mm-hmm. fact and not yeah. be like you know oh i'm different you know like no nah, like 100%. the fact that you're different it's a good thing you know? exactly Blessing. and as a christian too like you're going you have to be okay with persecution and exactly. being oh, yeah. one of, not even like jesus you have to was remember that? jesus told you like dude if the world hates you, no one hated me first. Exactly. Like, you're going to get persecuted. Exactly. I remember, like, in the Bible, it talks about how, like, when you're persecuted, it says that you're going to be blessed if you're persecuted for me, like, for God, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I remember when I was a Jew, I think I was a, a sophomore in high school, and I got my first, like, persecution, right? So, uh-huh. well, so like, people were making fun of me because I was, like, I was known as, like, the God, the Christian guy. The, the religious school. dude, the church yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember someone was making fun of me, and when I heard it, I was like, yo, Let's go, dude. I like, <laughs> got my first persecution, bro. I got my first persecution, guys. <laughs> so I was like, yo, let's go. And it's like, as long as you're okay with being different and, like, you know, you understand that you are supposed to be different and you're not going to be liked by mm-hmm. the world so necessarily. People are going to hate you so yeah, much. Yeah, like they hated Jesus and he was perfect. He didn't do one Literally, thing wrong, Jesus you know? was, like, he was 100% human, but he was 100% dude, God. Dude, he but, died for you. Yes. There is no greater love than that. And, and people still never understand that. Yeah. But I guess that could already lead into uh, one of our first questions. Like, as a Christian, through all that school experience, you know, what would be a struggle? Like, what what would oh. be some of your struggles as mm. a Christian? I mean, I would say, obviously, there's a lot of struggles as yeah. a Christian. Um, but for me, this kind of ties into, like, what, um, like, I, anytime anyone asks for advice, like, what's the one thing I would tell them? Like, mm-hmm. this was a struggle for me, and this is why, like, my relationship with God was like a roller coaster because of this thing. Um, and it's, like, watching who you surround yourself with. I think that is, like, super important. Next to, like, your relationship with God, that's, like, the next thing that's really important that you keep in check. Yeah. Because you, you've, everyone's heard the saying, you are who you surround yourself with, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, Paul says in the Bible, like, the people that you run with are going to determine the direction that you're running in as well. Yeah, yeah. So watching who you surround yourself with, if you, like, let, you know, your school friends or your, your people, your non-Christian friends, like, influence you and, and pull you away, it's not going to be an easy ride with your relationship with God because yeah, yeah. they contradict each other. Like, God exactly, says yeah. light and darkness don't mix. You know, there's no there's no in between. It's, like, it's one and the other. So you have to really be uh, intentional in, like, the people you surround yourself yeah. with. And as soon as I made that decision to surround myself with, like, people who are going to encourage me to read the Bible and get closer to God – everything changed everything became so much like easier not easier in the sense like i still like had like you know temptations and things you go through which is normal but um like it was easier to stay close to god in the middle of the storm because you have people because you have people who who think the same as uh, as you do because like if you're doing that with people who aren't christian it's only going to pull you further away from God. You not only that, they're like the advice they're going to give you, it's like it's going to be weak advice and it's going to push you even more away from God. So it's yeah. like what you're seeking from them, it's not helping you. Right. So you have to find like a good company, you know, a company that's going to um, 
may, you know, who are all Christian, who think the same way you do, mm-hmm. and the fact that you also think that way, it, it's very good. It's it's very good. A lot of people should think that way, you know, but yeah. not a lot of people do so. Right. It's good that you think that way. Yeah. So I guess you know, talking about all of this, your experiences in college, and mm-hmm. you know, with Christ, I guess we could go in. What is your testimony? You know, how was your first encounter with Christ? How did you first meet Christ? How was all of that? That's a great question. (laughs) Um, So, I mean, basically, just to give you, like, background, um, like I said, I grew up in, like, the church environment. My parents were always very involved in church. Uh, My mom is a pastor's daughter, so, like, she, from very young age, she was always involved in the church, whether it's worship or, like, you know, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And my father also had, like, a radical turnaround with his story. Um, So he's very involved in the church as well. Um, So growing up, you know, like, I was always in that environment in church, and it was kind of like I was just there, you know, like, sitting at the seats, hearing the the worship and the preachings. And, um, you know, up until I was around, like, 14 years old, it was just that, like, stagnant. Like, I accepted Jesus into my life, like, because, you know, my parents kind of, like, taught me that but i never was able to experience that for myself i feel like it was the god of my parents not my god yes exactly yeah that's a perfect way to put it it was like yeah it was they like it was the god of my parents not myself exactly how you said it um and then you know when i turned like around 14 like they would invite me the youth at at the time would invite me to go to to the youth service right Mm -hmm. And it was hard for me because I lived, like, 25 minutes away, and I didn't drive at the time. Not so the like, same. I live far away, right? too. Yeah, yeah so you, you know how I feel. Yeah. Or, you, know, you know how it was. Um, but my dad, like, you know, him being really, uh, like, wanting me to have a good relationship with God, even after work, like, when he was tired or whatever, he would still uh, go out of his way to drive me or if it was my mother. Um, either one. Like, that was the most important thing, that I had a relationship with God. So they took me. And I remember the first youth group I went to, um, it's like a, a core memory. I don't know if you guys watched the movie Inside, Inside Out. Out. Inside Out, yeah. Inside Out, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so this movie, like, they have, like, these core memories where, like... There's, like, five memories that is just, like, engraved. It's there, engraved it's inside. There. No matter how and old you so are. And it's so special. Yes. It's the, I know it's the Disney one, right? Yeah. Disney, right? <laughs> it's a beautiful movie. But um, that was, like, a core memory. When I walked into the door, I remember, like, swarms of people just, like, coming to me, hugging me, like, greeting me, shaking my hand and saying, like, it's so nice for you to be here. And, like, I felt so loved in the moment. Like, it was, like, nothing I've ever experienced before. Um, so, like, that stuck with me. And that made me want to keep going every week. I would uh, keep going to church on, on Fridays. And then they opened up, like, this Bible study time on Wednesdays. So I started going to that as well. And that was, like, the first time I took interest, like, really interest in the Bible. Because before it was, like, for me in my mind, like, I was young. It was, like, an old people book like, yeah, uh, like yeah. you know it's no, like old people, old people just stories like yeah it's cool but like i'm young so you know it's whatever but that was like the first time like i actually dove into the bible and like analyzed it and applied it to my life so i remember um the youth like the the person at the time leading the bible studies um they would you know like talk about certain things and they were talking about experiences with god they were talking about like dreams and visions and and all these like crazy experiences with god and you know I remember for, for like, such a long time, I was always chasing this experience. Like, I wanted so bad to have, like, this thing with God because everyone around me was, like, seeing cool things. Like, oh, he, like, this person had this dream. This person saw a crazy vision. Another person felt, like, fire going in their body. I was like, <laughs> I was like yo, I want to I wanna experience that, too. <laughs> so, so I was praying. I was, like, just f- trying to figure out the secret. Right? Like, what was the secret? And I was, like, doing everything. Like, during worship, I was, like, maybe if I, like, lift my hands up, something, like, something will happen. <laughs> Something cool happened. So I was just trying everything. And I remember I went to the youth leader. I was like, look, um, I really want to experience this thing that you guys are talking about. Like, what's the secret? What do I have to do? And then she just goes, oh, you just have to ask him. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh I, it's that too I, 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 yeah. I would have never thought of that, bro. <laughs> but um, he said, just ask. And then ever since then, I was like, okay, wow, that's that simple. So I remember I went home. At night, and I, like, got on my knees. I was like, God, like, I really want this with all my heart. Like, I want to have an experience. I want to have something that's, like, supernatural that I can, like, grab onto and, like, you know, just have that experience. And I remember I had my eyes closed. And then, like, you know, like, um, photographers, like, when they they have their camera, right? Yeah, yeah. When they take it, there's this flash, Uh right? So it was, like, it was that. That's the best way I could describe it. Like, a flash just came to my eyes while I was closed. And, like, this image just came to my head that I remember so clearly till today. It was, like, an, a view from up above down on the earth, right? And what I saw was a white horse on top of the earth and 
a man on the white horse, and he had, like, white clothes, and he had a sword. And he was, like, getting ready to charge down on the earth. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know the Bible, really, so I was like, okay. like you didn't know, you didn't know I, I was like, okay, what is this? So this is, like, really cool, God, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Yo. And then I go to, I, I literally typed in Safari. I was like, okay, <laughs> white <laughs> horse <laughs> with a white guy with the white, like, clothes and uh, charging down on earth. And then... um. I, the first thing that popped up was a verse in Revelations, and it described like the horseman and the, the coming of Revelation, Jesus, the coming yeah, of Jesus, and it described a white horse with a man with fiery eyes on on the horse, with a sword, with like a sharp sword, wearing white clothes, um, getting ready to descend on the earth. So it was like completely biblical, like what I saw, and Yo. it was crazy because I'd never read it, I never knew any of this, so that was like the first crazy thing that ever happened to me with god oh my. and it was amazing that was it was so very crazy i was 14 14 no. yeah i think i was 14 wow. and i i saw this and then after that it was like this i was just hungry you know i just wanted to go deeper and deeper and experience god more but the problem was what i mentioned before was i was surrounded with the wrong people mm. like, you know i was still very involved with my school friends uh, I played soccer, so I was very, you know, hanging out with them a lot. Yeah. Um, and so that kind of hindered my relationship with God because I didn't have that, you know, support to, to help me when I would struggle. Um, and so that was kind of what was holding me back. And then I had this kind of like hot and cold relationship with God where like it would be on fire and then you would cool down. Um, and then, you know, some time passed by and I remember we had this retreat, right? Uh, we had this retreat that you actually I were. Actually it was actually with me. Um, so was amazing. I. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so was not. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Ania wasn't in the picture. Yeah, she, <laughs> she came she, along. She was later. There in, yeah, she, she was there in spirit. Yeah, <laughs> she was there. But we had this retreat that we went to, which was awesome, by the way. Um, you know, I remember you talking about your encounter with Christ there. Yeah. Like I'll give that another day. Another, that's for a story for another that's time. For another time. Um, time. But, yeah, we went to this retreat, and I remember we had, like, these nights of worship where – um, we would just be in God's presence, just praying and worshiping. And it wasn't necessarily a preaching. It was just literally spending time with God. It, yeah, it was just like, uh, I guess, it, it was like we were just in his presence, like literally. Spontaneous, like, just worship time I've heard, God. I've, I've heard a lot about this retreat. Yeah. And from what you guys told me, it was just, like, just such, like, a peaceful moment. Oh, yeah. And was... I, saw, I, I did see a video that you showed me. Really? I did, yeah. I have, like, some video? I have some videos uh -huh. on that. Wow, I didn't know. Yeah. You got to show me that later. And, uh, oh, it was pretty cool. It was, like, that video where you guys were just, everyone was just in the... It was when we were in that room, and it was, like, yeah. all pitch All dark. Black. And yeah. you yep. were just worshiping. That was the one. That's what I'm going to talk about. For, like, three yeah. hours yeah. straight. And I was, like... And it, it was beautiful. I oh my gosh. What was even more crazy was the fact that it didn't feel like it was that long. It no. felt like it was like it like was five minutes literally. It was just so like and we in wanted the more and more and more and more. It's just like we didn't want to leave. Like it it's was insane. One of those moments, bro. It's beautiful. We it was life changing, right? And so I remember we were in this time of like just worship and praise, and the leaders were coming to pray over us and like prophesy over our lives. And one of the leaders came up to me. And uh, this person said, uh, Kevin, you are going to preach to the nations, right? You're going to preach all across the states to people in other countries. And I heard this and like I'm a little bit skeptical, right, when it comes to like things like this. Like obviously I have full faith in God, but sometimes I'm like, oh, was it really we for God? Yeah, right. We all have our doubts. We all have our doubts. I was like, was it really for also it's like <clears throat> what we don't know because a person is telling exactly. me and people are, people are flawed. Exactly. People and also you have flawed. to be yeah. careful about the prophecies you hear. Like exactly. you have to really make sure like and is how this old the right thing? During this retreat? Uh fifteen, sixteen. I maybe? was fifteen around. I was sixteen, there. I think. Okay. Yeah, I was probably sixteen. Um, and the youth leader came up and said, you know, said those things. I was going to preach to nations and, you know, reach a, a bunch of people, right? And so I was skeptical. I was like, was that really from God or was it like something she was just saying like in the moment she was feeling things, right? Um, and so time passed by, kind of just forgot about it. I was like, okay, um, you know, school, it was summer. So then yeah. school started junior year. And then I remember like I got involved in soccer again and my friends and like things kind of slowed down with my relationship with God. Um, and then COVID hit. This was the year that, you know, everything shut down. We were isolated. We were stopped. Um, and then basically that was when I was like, okay, I'm, you know, the, I'm not going to school anymore. Take, this was the time where TikTok was kind of like ramping up. Like everyone was Ooh. downloading TikTok. It was becoming like this big thing. Cause so this already dives into your TikTok phase. Dive into the TikTok phase. Yeah, that's where it all started. Um, 
And I was like, okay, I guess I'll start posting TikToks because no one can make fun of me for it. I'm not in school. <laughs> so I'm going to just post whatever I see. Like, I would, like, follow the trends in the For You page and see, like, I just wanted to see where I could go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I started just posting TikToks, like, copying trends in the For You page. At first, you know, like, nothing really crazy, no, like, likes or views just start off slow but i was persistent i was like okay i'm gonna try something i'm gonna try this mm -hmm. um now remember i was at a soccer tournament like on my way uh to get there and one of my videos like my phone just started like blowing up, blowing up. yeah like notifications oh this person liked your video this person commented a bunch of followers and things like that and so it, i got this like rush like it was almost like it literally felt like a drug like it literally felt like a, it was this dopamine rush that like overcame me. I was like, okay, I need more of this. Like I, I need oh, wow. to yeah, I need to keep going with this. Like it it hit me heavy, you know? And so um after that first video got like it, it got like at first it was hundreds of thousands, then it went to millions. And then I was like, okay, I need to keep posting. You know, I'm getting followers. They're expecting something out of me now. So I just kept posting. What and the problem was like I was so um like I love this rush so much that it didn't matter what content I posted, good, like good or bad. It just it benefited you. It benefited me, so I was just gonna pursue it with everything. And so you know, I lost my touch with God. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna post this. Uh, and I posted things you know that I shouldn't have posted, and especially as a Christian, um, you know, we're not the best things, we're not good things to post at all. And it's crazy because you experienced everything. You know, Nick saw everything. He was by my side. He was there to help me in all the moments where. Uh, you know, I was in the wrong, and he even reached out to me. He was like, Kev, like, this isn't you, bro. Um, you know, like, this isn't something you would post. Like, what's going on? And I kind of just ignored it. I was, like, so focused on, like, this. this you were blinded by all blinded. that fame. Yeah, like, I was blinded. blinded. And, and it I, happened so fast, too. I, do, do you think that that impacted it definitely. even more? Yeah, going from, like, not having any followers to, like, going viral and like, it's like you were getting thousands of thousands of followers a day yeah, I was like tens of thousands of followers a day <laughs> and it was like so like when it comes so quick you don't know how to handle it exactly. right so you become blinded by it and, uh, and you were young too which made it worse so young, like yeah you, it, exactly yeah <laughs> so I just kept going with it and um I remember one day when I reached like um this certain milestone like uh, a certain number when I was really I was really proud of it um I remember like my happiness depended on whether or not my videos were doing good. And I remember like a day in school, or actually, no, I'm not a day in school, a day I was out and uh, my video like wasn't doing good. My videos were like slowing down and like there was this emptiness inside. And it, it was like, it was like I was having withdrawal symptoms with like, oh my God. Yeah, it was like that real. It was that, it was that so real. It was an addiction. It was an addiction, literally an addiction. Yeah. So um, like I would feel this emptiness inside my heart and it would kill my mood. And my parents would be like, Kevin, what's wrong? I was like, I don't know, like, it's just a bad day, right? And all because of the TikTok thing. And I remember time went on, I kept grinding the posts out. And then uh, one day, like, a family member, my mom uh, came into my room, and she, like, she was like, Kevin, like, what is this? And she, like, showed me, like, the stuff I was posting. And she was like, this is not how I raised you. Like, I did not raise you to be like this. Like, you had everything to, you know, be a good person. Uh, Christian person and influence people in the right way and you're doing this like my mom was sobbing and crying and it broke my heart like seeing my mom like so disappointed in me and like everything I thought was important to me at the time just flew out the window you know like that was my my moment where I was like okay I, my mom's happiness is everything to me and you know my parents and I need to <clears throat> um, you know like change something there has to be a change and I remember I was like this is probably the darkest moment of my life where, like, I was just off all social media. I rethought everything, like, that I've ever did. Um, and I was like, okay, like, I will never, I never want to see my mother disappointed me like this ever again. And I just took a break from everything. I was like, okay, I'm not going to touch this. I'm just going to pursue my relationship with God. I'm going to make my mom proud. I'm going to make my, my family proud. And um, so I took a break. And then this is where I kind of was in isolation. I wasn't talking to any of my friends. I would, like from school and all that it was just me God my family and maybe like one friend where I would text here and there and it was a time where I was like okay I'm diving deep into this because I'd never I don't want to go back to, to that dark place where I was I was so blinded um and so I started just like reading the word every single day I had a lot of free time it was COVID I was just watching preachings reading the word doing anything I can to just you know like be to fill you up fulfill you with be fulfilled by God and like that be my happiness and not like, I was, it was like I was coming off that high from the, the social media. 
Um, so that was like a, a good amount of time I was doing that. And then um, I wanted to like, at the time I wanted to pursue ministry. And then I got off, I got back on TikTok after a while and I saw like there was this like Christian TikTok movement. Yeah. Where, like, oh, I love Christian TikTok. The Christian TikTok movement has start, like, started like, in COVID. Pandem- like that was pandemic. Like, it, was, it, was, it, mm-hmm. was, it was amazing. It really was because like the whole world stopped and a lot of people started like looking for answers you know like they were less distracted with school with work and they were looking for answers you know um so we were just like like i was like okay is this like an opportunity to you know praise the lord and like serve the lord right so i was like okay maybe i can use the followers that i've accumulated and maybe it was for the wrong like i accumulated them for the wrong reasons right they're not christian they're not anything but maybe this is a unique opportunity to reach out to this specific audience right because not many people have the opportunity to reach an audience and, you know, people followed you and then you switch up and, like, they see how God changed your life, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I saw this as an opportunity and I prayed a lot about it. And it was like God was tugging on my heart to, you know, um, you know, use this opportunity to kind of, like, not fix what I did, but use the, the bad and turn it into something good. Yeah, yeah. God does that. God puts us through uh, many, you know, like, trials and tribulations and... Uh, many of the times we don't know why, and it, it like, sucks in the moment. But um, in the end, it's all for the glory of God, right? And so this moment was, like, a moment where I uh, wanted to do something for God. Like, I was reading so much. Doing something, I wanted to, like, get it all out, you yeah, know? Like, yeah. I wanted to get it out. And so I remember I got back on TikTok. I started, like, pushing out, like, you know, small, like, Christian content, um, nothing too crazy, just, like, verses to help people out. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I transitioned more to, like, preaching, on on tiktok you know what's so funny i just remembered uh-huh. i used to steal my explorer for you page all the time me yeah really? i do i actually now that i think about it a lot of my friends and i would watch your videos sometimes no way. yeah and i do remember that i didn't remember like that deep but mm-hmm. i do remember like that whole christian tiktok phrase and i remember it was good like you were yeah, popping it. off in the correct direction yeah. and I, I loved seeing somebody young going for it yeah because i feel like at that time too um you didn't see that very often. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think something that was missing in our generation that started building up kind of from that time mm-hmm. was, like, the youth going at it and, like, yeah. vouching for Jesus and, like, proclaiming the name of the Lord and, like, not being afraid to spread the gospel. Mm-hmm. So that was, I was very happy to see all of that stuff, you know? And then, obviously, like, it started branching out more. Yeah. And I feel like social media, I've said this so many times and I will continue to say it, social media is such a bad place, but why can't we use it to glorify the Lord and to like switch it up. Yeah. It's it, the re- I'm said. saying this because of what you said too. Mm. The Lord takes what the enemy meant for evil and turns it to good. Yes. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So that's what this could be too. And so I think it's wonderful that you took that opportunity to kind of like use it for, use it for the correct glory. reasons. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. literally. Man. And then yeah. it was a blessing. Mm-hmm. You know, like that whole phase for you, I feel like it was such a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. It was, you know, awesome. I, I love, like, I absolutely love that time because I felt like for once, like, I, you know, I was like doing what God called me to do. And this goes back to what the youth leader told me, right? Mm-hmm. She said, you're going to preach to nations. You're going to reach tons of people and, you know, all over the world, all over the country. And it was like, I remember there was this moment of realization uh, where I thought back to that moment where she told me that. I was like, so this is what she meant she when meant she said that. you were going to reach so many people. Because I feel like in your head, you, she, you probably thought, is does this mean I'm gonna like fly out to yeah. I'll go to a stadium and like pre become a Billy Graham like preaching yeah. for a like, hundred thousand people? Exactly. But no, like this is how you know social media is also like you're preaching to an audience. It is. So it really is. You no, know, that's literally how it is. But guys, we will be back here uh, in just a couple of seconds. Just a couple of seconds. Yes, so. we're gonna be going on a short break right now. So stay there, stay right there. Stay we'll tuned. be right back. What's up, guys? Hi, everybody. We have a very quick announcement, guys. Yes. If you have never heard of Innovate Design, go check them out yes. for all of your custom needs. If you need mugs, t-shirts, hats, Anything, you name, name it. it, they can make it custom. We have a couple of examples here. They made our wonderful mugs and our wonderful cups. Look at these cups. Look, at this. Look how our names this is. on the back with First John one seven on the back guys innovate design is wonderful for all of your custom needs make sure you guys go check them out go check them out their socials go check them out check them out in the link in our bio make sure you use them for all of your needs yes you You can check them out see what they're all about and anytime you need anything make sure you send them a dm on instagram and you can book 
and talk to the owner, Deronisi. Deronisi. You guys can come up with a design that is perfect for you. For it's you. It's so easy to work with them, right? So easy to work oh, with yeah, them. Oh, yeah, like... Love them. Oh, yeah, Deronisi, she's a very practical person to talk to, has yes. great ideas. You guys do not want to miss out this chance. Make sure you go check them out. Go check them out, guys. And we're back. We are back, everyone. And I see that you haven't left. And I very much like <laughs> <laughs> very much like <laughs> i like that oh my God. uh the boys love that by the way the boys just haven't that. left it's goaded I like bro. that <laughs> <laughs> line will forever be remembered <laughs> <laughs> you just haven't left i like I like that, that. Oh. Uh, but anyway well, anyways i haven't left you haven't left you haven't left and it's great to see you here still watching with us i very much appreciate that. i like that <laughs> i like that very much <laughs> no well, let's continue on with our topic so we were talking about how you know you had somebody had your old youth leader had prophesied to you that you would be preaching to nations you know yes. mm -hmm. and you really discovered that through tiktok and so. it all clicked at that yeah so yeah. yeah so yeah that was like the moment of realization where it all just came together i was and like it took me months to realize it because i forgot that she said that yeah. and then like just months came by and it popped in my head i was like, like a oh. random thought like oh my god yeah, she like, said that about me and like a lot of times when god promises stuff like that's how like you remember like you end up forgetting about it and until then, like, it happens until it happens and like a couple like months or weeks later you're like oh like god fulfilled that you know it's like wow that's and then it's it, like yeah. i forgot the promise but god never does god never does. God yeah never exactly does. that's a never. perfect way to put it yeah um but yeah after like this whole christian tiktok thing um i kept pushing out content and you know it was started to do well um what kind of content you said you yeah would put like just like reading a verse like many then... preachings yeah, and... yeah i mean so... if, at first it started off with like little skits and like yeah. uh, i would like in the video i like point my finger here and like words would pop up like, it was like like <laughs> little videos, things like that because yeah. tiktok yeah. back then didn't have the the feature where you can now extend the video oh yeah tiktok yeah. back then was way less it's like update what's the word uh i don't it's, it was, it's a lot more modified now yeah. it's like a lot more like you can do a lot more with tiktok yeah. now no, yeah. you, have, like, like, you can extend the video to as long as you want yeah uh before it was literally like under a minute so it yeah. couldn't exceed a minute exactly so. yeah now we have like three minute three yeah, yeah. It's literally it's like turning into like kind of like youtube, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah but um yeah so time went on i kind of switched the, my style of the, what the kind of videos i was posting and i transitioned more to like the preaching side of it uh you know i saw a lot of other christian tiktokers preaching i was like okay like i've i've been told that i've been called to preach so um maybe this is an opportunity and so you know i would read um and like figure out topics and things like you know that i feel like people of like the Christian TikTok community were struggling with or some in some way that I could help, right? Um, so I started doing these preaching videos. Um, you know, over time, it started to do really well. And, you know, as much as, like, I loved it and it was, like, really good to, you know, help the kingdom of God, the thing uh, came back, like, that, like, dopamine rush feeling, that mm -hmm. came back. Um, and, like, that was a huge battle for me. Like, I was thinking, like, the last thing I want is for pride to get oh. in the way of my relationship with God because a lot of good things um, that people have done start off with really pure intentions, but as we as grow, it starts growing, uh, Lonnie lose. Frisbee I'd say is a perfect example of that. Even Samson in the Bible yeah. is a perfect example of that, where the where his pride got uh, took over. Yeah, and because of that, you know, lost all his power, lost all the gifts that God gave him. You know, exactly. And it's very easy to happen because pride isn't. It's it's like a sneaky sin. Like it'll sneak its way without you even realizing it. Because I could tell myself, okay, I'm posting this stuff for God, but like deep down in your heart, like there's still that part of you that loves the attention, loves the followers, loves. That was kind that. of that kind of ties into Samson. You know, yeah. his his way of being prideful, I guess, was breaking his promise that he made to God, which was, I'm not gonna tell anybody where my power comes from. I can't mm -hmm. cut my hair. That's true. And he That's was true. like, oh no, but this like Delilah's beauty, I have to tell. And he told her. You know, that was a way of being prideful, too. Exactly. And it's something that I don't want to mess with because I know, like, in my nature, it's easy for pride to get in my heart, yeah, right? Yeah. So this was a huge battle for me. I was like, do I keep posting, like, you know, or or should I just, like, take a step back and reflect, and reflect on everything? So for me, like, the right option 
Uh, you know, as much as posting Christian content is great, like, if I'm not doing it for the right reasons, then I don't want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like, with mega churches, things like that, they start off really good, you know, but then it turns into, like, the business because so many people get involved. Yes, money that's gets involved, exactly money it. Gets involved. And I didn't want that. That's the last thing I wanted for me because when you're a teacher and a preacher of the word, you have a lot more responsibility before God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, like they say in the movies. Like, yeah. it's very much true. And you don't want to mess with, uh, you know, like, when you have, when God gives you that audience, you don't want to be, like, using it to your advantage, like, yeah. using God's name for my followers, for, for me. So this is a big thing I took a step back in. Um, I thought about it. I really did. And, um, you know, I thought about, like, the rush I get from it and, like, my personality. Like, is this for me? Like, does God, like, does God want me to keep preaching on TikTok? And after praying and, like, seeking God's, uh, like, the help from the spirit from him uh it was like my heart like changed like there were, i felt pushed to like it was like god was telling me like kevin you're so worried about like the macro like the the tons of people out there that you're forgetting about the people in your your circle micro, right yeah. your best friends the, your family the people in your church the people that you're closest with like why aren't you helping them because or even you know, the people that you were mentioning that you had a lot of friends who weren't christian exactly. who didn't know christ exactly we need we need to reach out to those people as well when, exactly. when christ says for us to you know be uh when christ told the disciples to become fishers of men um you know obviously sometimes we apply it to our lives and we think, oh, I'm going to preach to a multitude of, of people. I'm going to preach to thousands and thousands of people. But God could literally just call you to go literally just preach to the homeless person that's right next oh, to yeah. your house. Absolutely. So it's never about, you know, a, a attention or, or numbers. And it's and I'm really glad that that clicked in your head. Like, no, oh, yeah. pride is going to take me over because or else if that happens, um, the ministry could have ended right yeah, there. Yeah, like what There's happened to Lonnie Frisbee. You know, Lon lot, I don't know if yeah. you know Lonnie Frisbee, but mm -hmm. he was an American evangelist that that happened to him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he he was growing a, a big ministry. Ooh, huge ministry. Huge yeah. ministry. We're in uh, California. In California. Mm -hmm. People were like, he came from like the hippie area oh, from like okay. the 60s. Yeah. I don't and know if you watched Jesus Revolution. Yeah, it's about yeah I did watch Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's about that. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, the we long we dude talk. With hair, we that's, talk that's, that's him. That's Lonnie Frisbee. Oh, yeah. wow. We talk about oh, that movie a lot. Yeah, yeah so movie. obviously in the movie, there's a part where he gets a little like crazy. sick in the head. Yeah. So yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little crazy in the head. But that's what happened. It's because he let the pride take over because what yeah. he had was beautiful. Mm. You know, the testimony that came with him was beautiful. But unfortunately, the pride entered his heart. And he, you know, he left. He even divorced with his wife, and he started practicing homosexuality. Oh, wow. And he even died of a uh, very unfortunate death too. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, and died like forty years old, I think something like that. Very young. Yeah, in his forties. Very young. See, that's that's what that's just what, to see what pride could do to someone. It will destroy. It. And I always say it: pride was the first sin ever committed, like in the heavens. The enemy mm -hmm. is who he is because of pride. He wanted that glory that God had. Exactly. And so like it's a it's a dangerous sin that like I would love if it was like spoken about more because it's like pride, yeah, people say pride is bad, but it's like a it's a serious thing. Like oh, yeah. it could get in between relationships with friends. It could get it's like it's like a sin that has multiple like consequences Outcomes. to it. Yeah. Outcomes. It could destroy a ministry, everything. It's not so, just being prideful. It's not. Pride is like a root sin and it stems out other little sins. You know, like mm -hmm. it's that it's that serious. And so for me, I took a step back. I was like, okay, I don't ever want to be like the famous guy. I don't want to be the guy with a huge ministry. I would rather be like the poor guy who's going to like a random country and helping out people and no one knows about it. Like on yeah. the down low. On the low. Like I do not. Just to serve. Yes, yeah, just to serve. I don't and want not to name. be posting it on your socials. Like, yes, hey guys, no. I'm here in Uganda not, or whatever. Nothing wrong about that either, you know, but yeah. I get 100% because that can really infiltrate someone's heart if exactly. they're not prepared. Exactly. And yeah, that's the key point. Like it's if you're, you have to, it's like you have to know your personality. Some people are more prone to fall into pride than others other people can handle a big ministry and not let pride in the way but for me i like analyze myself and you know through prayer and getting close to god i like realize that about myself like i don't think i'm like i can handle all the attention all the fame so i'd rather just stay away from it so it's not like a risk because that... you already saw it happen once exactly. and I, well actually twice mm -hmm. so it was like 
no, I'm gonna take a step back, and I'm just not. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want this to affect my relationship with I think God. That's also so very, that's beautiful. Honestly. I think it's also very humble of you to say that mm-hmm. because you recognize it in yourself. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was. It was hard for me because I. I love doing it too. Like it was, you know, something I enjoyed doing and I liked it, and you know, it was cool. But like at the end of the day, it, the most important thing is that like my relationship with God is, you know. It's all his will, like whatever he wants. And through prayer, it, that's what I felt him tugging at my heart to do. Take a step back. Worry about the people in your circle, the people that are closest to you. Reach out to, you know, your people in school, whatever it is, because you, I'm the only one that could reach out to those people. You can only reach out to your people. We all have, we're all put in people's lives for a purpose, right? Exactly, because we yeah. can reach out to them. And so, you know, just I felt that God was tugging on me to, um, you know, like step back from the, the TikTok ministry and like go into real life with it, like, mm-hmm. you know, in your church, whatever it is. So um, that's kind of where, why like people are asking, oh, why don't you post Christian TikTok stuff anymore? Why aren't you on social media? Mm-hmm. Like I love, like, like Ania said before, social media has a lot of like bad things, right? There's a lot of bad things that come out of social media, but when, you know, God sees bad, he can use it for an opportunity to glorify his name like this like this is beautiful like this podcast yeah. everything like we're using something that you know could be from the, is from the enemy but god is you know using it for his glory so exactly, things yeah. like this are amazing um but for me personally like i would i would step back because it's me like you know i i wouldn't want to like my my how easy it is for me to fall into pride i don't want to be involved i just want to help people whoever god tells me like whether it's you know like i said in other countries or a guy, a homeless person on the street, like you said, whatever that looks like, like I'll be more than happy to do, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of like where my walk with Christ is now. I've been so, praying. Oh, I'm ahead. sorry to cut you off, but so yeah. pretty much how long did the, the whole TikTok phase last so, for? Yeah. Mm, that's a good question. I think it lasted, it started my um, my senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say it probably lasted like almost a year okay. or so. Like, Almost a year, yeah, and then, um, you know, I was going to go into, like, uh, like mini- I was, like, so focused on, like, ministry, like, going into ministry as, like, a full-time thing, but then again, like, things were, like, convicting my heart, and I was, and then I heard a preaching, actually, that said, um, not everyone is called to, like, have, um, like, a full-time job in the church. Yeah, Some yeah. people are called to, uh, some people have secular callings, right? So, um, wherever I work, let's say it's in finance, I'm studying mm. in finance, I'm called to reach out to the people who are outside of church because, yeah, it's uh, it's necessary for us to take care of people inside the church, but we also have to. There's people that God people calls outside, yeah. to bring like in people that. from an mm-hmm. outside, you know. So we don't have to like be full time preachers, full time pastors, whatever. Like God wants us to go wherever we are in the middle of of you know the world and whatever it is, and He wants to call us to be that salt of the earth like we said because if we're not in the middle if we're like avoiding that aspect of it when are how are we going to bring in people you mm-hmm. know yeah. that's and what I, jesus did he went no literally i literally was about to say that like the perfect example to follow from that is jesus because jesus was humble you know jesus was a hundred percent god but he was a hundred percent human people forget he was born in a manger guys like he was born in bethlehem in a manger in a barn in a barn a filthy he wasn't place. he wasn't born in a royal castle in jerusalem like no he was born as like as human as it could be and yet he was still so humble and his ministry went on and, and on he, and on and it was beautiful. jesus jesus hello <laughs> he jesus <laughs> literally he was jesus and yeah he was so humble he is the king of kings lord of lords everything hello like that's exactly. crazy for me to grasp sometimes you know it's just perfect and it's like the beauty like that in itself it's beautiful the that. purity of who he was it was just it was beautiful like when we got to read hebrews like there was one time me and Nia, we really got to study and read hebrews. yeah we did it like a bible study at our church and we all read hebrews dude mm-hmm. hebrews oh, wow. was beautiful like reading hebrews and seeing how human he was and it's yeah. like it really it, it like touches. It, it touches. shows how me, like, what his purpose here. Uh-huh, on Hebrews earth. is yes. kind of like how Christ lived and how, how we should imitate Christ. Mm. So how we it, to me, Hebrews is like a manual of like how you should be like Christ, pretty much. No, yeah. literally, and it was it was beautiful. Man. And it's like those stories are what really like drives us as Christians to go out there and like do things for God because He like was so kind and so loving to literally like sacrifice His own Son. And I was talking to my dad, um, and like he told me he was like. 
um, like, you know when you love, a, uh, like, a partner, right? Like, mm. you would do anything for them? Yeah. It was like, get ready, because it gets 10 times, like, stronger. That emotion gets 10 times stronger when you have your first child. Mm. And he was like, bro, if, like, my son or my daughter was ever to, you know, get, like, there was, like, a car accident, he would, not even thinking about it, he would jump in the way, save the son. And I thought about that, like, from God's perspective, right? Like, he loves Jesus so much. Like, he loves Jesus more than we can ever comprehend. And he, instead of, like, like our father would jump in the way for us, God said, I'm going to give you my son so that you guys can have the opportunity to be with me. Like, he gave his son. He didn't, like, jump in the way for Jesus. He loved Jesus so much and yet still gave his son mm -hmm. to go on the cross and suffer and be that sacrifice. Because of his yeah. love for because us. Because of his love for us. Because and that's, like, love. that's something that, like, grasped me. I was like, okay, I'm doing everything for God. Like, from now mm -hmm. on, bro, like, I am committed. Like, you know, like, it's that thing that's, like, so beautiful yeah. when you, like, comprehend how much God actually loves you. Uh -huh. The person watching, you know, it's actually a beautiful thing. Really. It is. It, it's enough to literally change your life, man. Mm -hmm. like, and then after you kind of ended this, so you said it lasted for about a year or so, this mm -hmm. Christian TikTok prison. So after it ended, how is that going on now? Oh, now, so, I mean, right now I'm, like, off TikTok. I'm doing a, a fast where, um, like, I would just look at the settings and see what app I'm using the most, and it was TikTok. So um, I'm just off TikTok right now. Um, and obviously, like, I'm praying about it to see – what God wants, but um, right now, like, I don't have plans to, like, you know, like, put out content again. Uh, you know, I'm really happy with what God's doing now and, like, uh, the church and, you know, with my relationships and things like that. So um, preaching is something that I'm really, like, starting to get back into because I used to preach a lot on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And now, like, being able to preach in person and in churches is, mm -hmm. like, something that's exciting to me. I love, like, speaking and, and all that. It's, like, a blessing from God. Um, so like, that's where my excitement is right now. Just really like staying in the word, make sure being edified every single day, um, and pursuing God in communion with like my church friends and the people closest to me has been like the most beautiful thing right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. That's really good. So I'm glad that you're, you know, despite everything that happened, it's still flowing. It's still working and Absolutely. it's good for you to recognize as well that, you know, maybe God, God did use you tremendously during that time. I know that for sure. And now God is like, okay, well, we have more things going on. Yeah. There's other ways, ways that I can use you. Exactly. You sent me a preaching by Andrea Aquino one time. Yes, love Andrea. I love Andrea Aquino. And he preached about um, kind of like, who's to say that you have to be stuck in one ministry? Mm. You so know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, his preaching was pretty much about like, you know, the spirit, the, the, the kingdom. Like, you know, when you're living um, a walk with Christ, it's it's in a form of seasons. Mm -hmm. like, you uh, know, yes, there's, I said that's There's, true. there's mm -hmm. the yep. fall, winter, spring, summer. There's always going to be the highest of the highs and then the lowest of the lows. Absolutely. It's seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you can literally be like singing in front of millions of people. Mm. Like, you know, using the, God, the, the gifts that God gave you to sing in and front like of everyone. And worship and be a and worship, worship leader. And do all of that. And then the next God is like, okay, I want you to preach to your neighbor or go to Japan to take care of uh, an orphanage, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that he gave you an example of to, that. To go to an orphanage as an example. Pretty much what he, to summarize what his preaching was, it was like titles don't mean a thing because your title is child of God, mm, not worship like leader, that. pastor, right. or kids ministry or missionary. Those are just meaningless titles exactly. because at the end of the day, God doesn't care where you are. He's going to use you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes, God calls people to be worship leaders and pastors and missionaries and all of that stuff. But what's to say that you can't work in something else? That's very You know what true. I'm saying? God can literally use someone that's literally like cooking food at your church. Like God could use people who uh, your cooking skills. God could literally use whatever be at, you have. You know, use the donkey to speak. If literally. I'm literally. <laughs> that's a perfect example. Well, like God, oh can, God use can use whatever. And so that's why I kind of Relates to what you were saying too, because God used you for TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that God stopped using you. Now He's using you in different forms. Exactly. Because that's how God works. You know, God is a God of change. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Transition. Transitioning. You know, and we have to grow up as we grow up and as we become older. Obviously, we're all young. We're all youth. You know, but we still 
we have so much to go through, but oh, this yeah. is just the beginning. No, just the beginning. This is literally just the beginning. And we have our whole futures mm -hmm. ahead of us, and God's just going to keep using us more and more and more. But we have to always be, like, out there seeking more and more and yes. more because God can use us, bro. He can yeah. use us so much. That's why I really Absolutely. love that preaching. I, I've been applying it to myself a lot, kind of listen, um, listening, kind of realizing in my own life and observing myself, like, okay, well, stop conforming yourself to one specific title because mm. God... You know, that's not good either. That's also another way to get prideful. Yes, yeah, true. Another Very way true. to get to become Very prideful. True. It's like, oh, well, I'm this title. And it's like, sweetie, God gave to you. God can take it away. Yes. Like, oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Like, I that what you just said is so, like, big. And um, it, like, instantly reminded me of the story of Job where, like, mm -hmm. he Job had everything, right? And he even Literally did, everything. And he even did everything right, too. Like, Job was, you know, a, amazing in yeah. every aspect. He was a, he would literally do burnt offerings for his children. Yeah, like he was the man. Like he was good. Like perfect. He didn't even do anything wrong. And then the devil came to God and was like, oh, if you take this away, this, this, and this away, he will like, you know, fall away from you. He will deny you. Um, and God said, okay, you can take this away, but don't touch him, mm -hmm. right? And then God stripped Job like of everything he had of, you know, like a bunch of things. And in the end, Job was still faithful. Like he didn't let like the pride get in the way or like oh i did everything right god why did you take everything away from yeah. me right so god has the power to give and he also has the power to take away and he can do it righteously that's like a thing that's really important as christians is to always stay humble yes. because mm -hmm. god even if you do everything right it does not mean at all that things are always going to be good you mm -hmm. know like we as christians we have to go through things um go through trials and tribulations because that's what produces endurance as a christian that's yeah. what uh, teaches us lessons and that's not an excuse Paul to like says that actually yeah and it's not an excuse to make mistakes right we're not going to intentionally make mistakes so we have that testimony like a good testimony like you yeah. said exactly it's mm -hmm. like that, like you just as a christian it's gonna happen but don't do it like purposefully you know yeah. i remember in my life like i like earlier earlier on like I had nothing bad happening to me. And all these people had these, like, pretty stories of their testimonies. Like, uh, oh, so like, oh, I was down in the drugs, and yeah. now Jesus. Don't, those, are, I, those are beautiful <laughs> are, testimonies. Are. God changing your life. But another beautiful testimony is, like, I was faithful my whole life. I've been yeah, in church of, my whole life. Said actually said that. Yeah, I don't know if you remember. Brianu, if you're watching this, we love you. Love you, Brianu. Um, <laughs> no, but he tells us that all the time. He's like, to me, the most beautiful testimony is saying, I grew up in church, and I've been faithful through all the hardships. I still serve the Lord through my whole that's, that's still also a an amazing testimony. testimony. It is. It is. And, like, it's, like, something that you just have to, like, keep in mind. Like, don't try to make mistakes so you have a prettier story. Because, mm -hmm. like, oftentimes, like, you hear about the people that it went right for, but the people that, like, stayed in those drugs or stayed, you know, away from God, you don't hear from it. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like every time you go away, like, things are going to be okay. But you have to be careful because, like, falling into certain things, like, could really take you away from God. Like, oh, you yeah. mentioned the guy who, like, you know, fell into Lonnie pride, and yeah, sexuality, and then he he died early. Yeah. So, so it it was and away from Christ. Well, away, that we know of. That we know yeah. of, yeah. That, that we know of, yeah. Because it's, you don't know if someone's intimate with Christ, but from what um was said about him, he pretty much died, yeah. you know, without Christ. So yeah. I think that actually goes into our last thing, which yeah. is, you know, what is one piece of advice for the youth based on everything you've gone through? What would be one mm. piece of advice that you'd give the youth? I know we mentioned a, a couple, but yeah, yeah. yeah I there's mean, there's so there's many so fire points. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot, man. But um, if I were sitting in front of someone, they asked like one piece of advice. Um, there's like two things in my mind I'm trying to pick in between. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like what I mentioned in the beginning. Um, you know, I don't want to like repeat myself, but it's really this, it's really that important to me. Like, mm -hmm. um, and that's like watching who you surround yourself with. I know I said it, but like, it really is that important. Like it makes a whole difference because like, if you're a Christian or you're trying to pursue God and you're in it by yourself, especially if you're like a new Christian, it's very hard, you mm -hmm. know? So, and people have a big influence. Like as humans, our, our natural tendency as humans, like, um, we adapt to what's around us like yeah. we naturally become like say i hung i hang out with you for like two weeks straight i'm gonna be like you like we're gonna start talking the same oh, we're gonna literally. start like literally becoming very similar people and uh -huh. like when you hang out with a friend a lot you notice that like no, you yeah. take their like the way they talk and the you, slang and yeah everything. you get it yeah. and that's like evidence that you all you do become who you surround yourself with yeah. so if anyone's watching that's you know not um or that's like a christian youth like my advice to you just Please surround yourself with other people who are going to bring you closer to Christ. Because when you have someone pushing you and um, you can push them as well, like 
the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Yes. Right? I just preached about it last week, and it's so true. Like, if it says you, in Proverbs. Yes, the, yeah. The, the way that iron sharpens iron, a friend also sharpens a friend. Exactly. And, like, I did an analogy with, um, like, say you have, let's say there's a relationship. One person, let's say, is iron. Mm-hmm. One person is wood. Uh, I watched a preaching on it. And, like, when iron hits wood, what happens to the iron? Right, it doles out because mm-hmm. it loses its edge because constantly hitting wood and the wood and the, breaks and the wood breaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is the relationship is just they're both not benefiting at all. Like yeah. they're actually not benefiting. It's getting worse. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it just gets worse. And then um, I did another one where it's like if there's one, if there's two people that's wood, right, and they're going in, con- in contact with each other, they're just going to keep breaking. Like, exactly. wood breaks, it's going to break on wood because it's both very fragile. Yeah. So, like, that's why we see heartbreak. That's why we see friendships that don't work out mm-hmm. because of, um, you know, like, it's just people aren't iron. Like, exactly. because when you're iron and iron, you guys will sharpen each other. You guys will push each other to, to be better, not just as Christians, but as yeah. people in every aspect, you know. So, just... Pray to God if you don't know of any friends right now. Pray to God um, that he puts those people in your life because he will. I have no doubt about that. He'll put the right people in your life so that you can pursue God and grow closer to him. I'm not saying like you like you can't pursue God on your own because you 100% oh, no, can. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. just makes it so, that much easier when you have, when you you have know, that support. support yeah. Yeah. And also, I guess that also brings another point too. You know, if For those of us, I know I have a lot of friends who aren't Christian, and that's fine, but mm-hmm. be that vessel. Be yes. that person who teaches them about Christ. Yes. You know, use that as an advantage and continue growing a relationship with Christ. And I agree with you one thousand percent. Your circle matters. Yes, and so and, much. And we're not also we're not saying to like stay away from like non Christian people. Like oh, we're yeah, not yeah, saying yeah. that. Oh like, no, we love no, no, them. No, no, no. We absolutely love everyone. Exactly. Yeah. But we're just saying, um, just be careful. You know, like um, have boundaries and be careful, like putting yourself in certain situations and avoiding mm-hmm. temptations. Uh, because it's real, and you know that's sometimes how we fall into sin. So you just have to keep a balance, right? Yeah, yes. balance of yes. your relationships. One hundred percent. I think that's so wonderful, Kevin. Don't. Dude, thank you so much for being on the podcast course, for us thank today. You guys for oh my god, having it was such me. a such a wonderful episode. This is I really love this conversation, you know, and just yeah, that was, everything that, that you've gone awesome. through. I know that God is going to continue using you so much tremendously. Oh, yeah. And you guys too. This podcast is a blessing. Make sure you watch it every single week. Let's every go. Like, you better share it. <laughs> no, it's a blessing. It really is. It really is. Uh, yeah, guys. I really hope this testimony of this too impacts the music. Oh, just like it did for us, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, guys, so that's all that we have for this week's episode. Yes. Make sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode. Yes, sir. We want to see you there. We can't wait to see you. Yes. Okay. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys once again for watching. And we'll see you all later. Peace later. out. Bye. Bye.